fall front first on your face, trying to do something that's not gonna work. We are going to be talking about some of your university projects. We get the flexibility to do what we want. We wanted to get to something Hollywood level. Both Sondre and I have failed a ton, but we've kind of taught each other quite a few things. It's not very often in my experience that you work with someone that things just work out. Sondre asked, what would it look like if the planet was covering most of the screen? And he was like, oh man, now you got it. Nice. Yes. What have been the biggest things learned about the VFX pipeline? The thing I'm most thankful for is knowing quite a bit about compositing because even with quite bad CG, you can make things look super cool. Who's got the cleanest Moog files? So when you don't have time, it becomes messy, man. I was like, oh my god, what is this mess? <laughs> this is terrible. What are your plans now in terms of work? I did uh, get into the studio of my dreams. Sandra, Sebastian, welcome to the VFX process. Thank you. Thank you. Excited to be here. Uh, one of you guys, I think it was Sandra, somewhere on the internet says that you're 13. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, that is impressive. It's actually a big problem I have because I'm not able to change the bio in YouTube. <laughs> oh, really? So it's, re it's, it's really annoying. I'm not 13 at all. You guys just left university, so that's like 20... 21. 21. Awesome, man. Yeah, so you finished university, and today we are going to be talking about some of your university projects. Yeah, so I guess we can start talking about the bachelor assignment. It was a fun one. We had, like, four months. We get the flexibility to do basically what we want. Yeah, take it completely from start to finish. Is that sometimes a good thing or a bad thing to have what, do whatever you want? Yeah, it's, it sounds super nice, uh, right? But it's very hard, and we've been through a lot of back and forth because... We want to do so many cool things and you kind of have to go back all the time because we're not able to do all the things we want. You kind of have to step into the, the different roles yourself to so you kind of limit yourself. So there was uh, mostly like the producer when it came to time and then I became the producer when it comes to budget. <laughs> oh, okay. But like we're both quite realistic in regards to what we can do. After two and a half years, we kind of have quite a good understanding of what's possible. We had a pretty high like goal. We wanted to get to something Hollywood level, but at the same time, we did see previously, after failing quite a bit, that going too ambitious, what was it going to be working out? Of course, you want to go all out, but you've got to be realistic at the end of the day. Did you have any experience prior to university in the world of 3D and visual effects? So I didn't know any 3D at all, but I had like worked in After Effects, basically done compositing, but I didn't really know the term or anything. I just had fun and uh, wanted to learn how, how in the world we do this. Then got introduced to 3D and Nuke and these amazing tools. I was kind of the opposite. In uh, high school, we uh, I went to uh, something called media production. It was basically do whatever you want, as long as it's kind of within media. Started taking up Blender, and uh, I did a few like satisfying 3D animations. After a while, I was like, I really want to do some live action, and then uh, comp became more of a thing. Also, I had a buddy that uh, already went to the school that I wanted to go to. He told me that, yeah, we use Nuke there, so I tried out a bit. Nice. We're a big fan of uh, Blender in this studio, guys, so yeah. for dropping the word Blender, we're going to get a clap. <laughs> So we talk about the broad project. How do you, on a project like this, hone in and decide what you want to do and what's the inspiration? So Sundar is mostly the like sci-fi dude. He did the sequence with the with the girl in the suit, which was really cool. Yeah, so the suit project was like the last task we had before moving on to the over to the bachelor. So this was like individual projects. Though I did get a lot of help from Sebastian, but and Sebastian, what was your uh, involvement in the suit project? I, I was allowed to be an onset supervisor, and uh, I did help a bit with uh, like feedback and trying to uh, help him out with a glass shader. I guess I helped him out with some tests, like on sh onset. Yeah, I generally ask Sebastian understand a lot of stuff all the time. Would you say, Sebastian, you have a, a more of a, a technical side as well as a creative side? Yeah, I would say it's it's leaning more towards technical. I don't know if you saw that I sent you uh, my student reel, but there I had a pirate cannon. That's kind of what I was dealing with when Sondra was uh, doing the sci-fi suit. There's a lot of inspiration out there. What, what kind of movies and things inspires you? I'm actually not watching too much movies, to be honest. It's mainly watching the references, I think. I have watched Iron Man and those movies, which are cool. So probably taking some inspiration from there. Uh, Blade Runner? 
Yeah, yeah, later on. So, okay, I have watched some movies. <laughs> yeah, because I, I specifically remember him mentioning Blade Runner aesthetic is really, really cool. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. I love Blade Runner. What about you, Sebastian? What kind of things inspire you to create? Through our school, we had uh, access to Flim.io. And I also got tipped about Shot Deck. So I've been scrolling through a bunch, uh, looking through all the different cool shot aesthetics. There's also this really cool uh, YouTube channel called Amazing Shots, I think. And just pretty much every Christopher Nolan shot is just beautiful. I like something that could be real. Talking about kind of images, uh, Sandra, you were generating a lot of like concepts and, and images using like mid journey and things. It's a bit of controversy ar around that, but uh, we're definitely not going to go to the controversial side. But yeah, I feel like mid journey produced the kind of style that I really like, mm -hmm. and it's super great for these early references. But I realized a bit more into the project that the lighting might not be realistic at all, but for the style and also for the design of the helmet and these kinds of stuff, it's really great and really great for just sparking inspiration. In general, as Sondra said, like the feel and design of, of AI generated images are really, really good to use as a reference and aesthetic. What happens next? Do you just get straight into the 3D world? Do you start doing any sketching? We can draw, but we're maybe not the best. But both Solder and I really like the previous phase. We kind of focus more heavily on that, trying to design the different shots. Actually, when we look back at uh, what Cryo Odyssey used to look like as a previous, the whole project is uh, is just a better version of the previous, which is kind of cool to see. That's kind of where we spend most of our time. Awesome. We're just going to shout out to the previous world because we are ourselves <laughs> a previous studio. So we'll touch on previous now then. How important is using previous for even a small project like this? Knowing that you're going down the line into shooting this and creating visual effects and getting it to that film level. For the cryo we did everything in CG, so it was nice to just being able to almost copy the camera over but i think especially for the suit sequence that i did as well even though it's short the amount of work that go, goes into every shot is it's it's quite a lot of time so i really wanted to plan everything out as best as i could i think we would have spent way too much time on set even if it's just four shots the fact that you've you've planned that all out early on before you've got to set it just shows how useful it is yeah and we had multiple rounds on, on all, all the previous as well so a bunch. Did you ever get on set and, and go, oh, actually, you know what? This looks great from this angle. Did it develop and change much from the previous? For sure. I had several different versions of the canon shot done in previous. And uh, my teacher, he really wanted like a closer in shot so that you see more of the explosion. But I kind of wanted a more matte painting feeling. So when I got on set, I kind of had both versions of the shot and then just seeing how the actor played and uh, and uh, seeing the canon in the frame it made it like an easy choice on set to go for having it wide yeah that's so interesting it's sometimes it's just the smallest tweaks that can make such big differences in composition yeah definitely you using maya for your previous uh, sandra did you use blender for your previous sebastian or do you also use maya as well all the teachers used maya i was taught Maya so uh, now I barely know Blender. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I would say that uh, yeah Maya is definitely my go-to uh, 3D software. Some might say sadly. Hey what if it works and you're comfortable in it then that's the main thing you know. Although we do love I mean come on we've got to say that the viewport in Blender is quite handy in terms of visualizing you know shaders and, and things like that i guess this is more software talk but especially being able to visualize vdbs in the so uh, in the viewport and blender is just that was maybe one of the most tricky parts of uh cryo odyssey uh trying to line up a vdb without seeing it in the viewport i mean that took ages was you ever torn to be like oh, let me just jump into blender and just do this shot i did jump into blender a few times just to see where the position might be of the VDB <laughs> and just to jump back into my and try to get the same uh, positions. Yeah. Didn't we talk about using Blender for the whole project in the start? Yeah, we did. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. So w what was the decision to not do that? Some of those plugins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> what plugins were these that were that kind of might helped that decision? So that I had this cool uh, plugin that where you can actually do the match move in Maya directly. Yeah, because our plan was originally to do somewhat of the same thing that I did in my previous project with the girl in the suit. 
just doing it even more advanced. And I spent quite a lot of time to make that workflow work in Maya. So I think that was a big driver. How much of your like spare time outside of lectures were you spending learning additional skills? I guess it's mainly outside lectures, I feel like. <laughs> Yeah. Like that's the base. Yes, for sure. 95% of what we've learned has been uh, on our own, but that 5% was crucial to kind of get into it and learn the basics and, and try, try to understand or, or try to understand the YouTube videos that we then see later at home. Yeah, I feel like the, the first year is quite important and like learning the complete basics. Also at university, you get people like Sondra, uh, where, where we could cooperate and uh, teach each other then later on as well. And I feel like we're ever in kind of interesting combination because Sebastian is, I feel like he's a lot more technical than I am in many regards. We've kind of taught each other quite a few things. So we've become more skillful in both of the fields kind of. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Joining forces and, and working together. I mean, you can only get stronger. What drew you guys together? Quite a lot of factors that come into play. But as Sebastian said, we had, we had also worked a bit together before and we felt like it was quite a good mix. It's not, it's not very often in my experience that you work with someone that just things just work out. We have kind of a skill set that is filling each other out a bit. We were both equally motivated to get things through. But uh, I do have to say that when Sondre uploaded something really, really cool to Chakrid, and I was like, oh man, I have to I have to like live up to that level. Uh, so then that kind of pushed us even further. That's only a healthy thing, isn't it? Where you're constantly up in the bar and then your levels and standards just keep going up and up and up. For example, with the spaceship, Sondre took most of the texturing job. Then it, we kind of had this like ping pong where, where he would do most of the work and kind of get it going. That was like very much back and forth, back and forth, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. Yeah, and that comes back to kind of inspiring each other as well, because when I get super sick of that spaceship, Sebastian goes like, oh, now it's pretty cool. I'd love to finish that. One thing I really liked doing on this project was just going through the whole process as quickly as possible. I, I guess it's relatively usual, but uh, we called it version zeros at school. Go through the scene, uh, render it out, go through the comp and see what, what's needed from there on out. Early on, we were comping the planet, for example, just to see how it would look like in the comp. You know, when you're dealing with planets and spaceships and scale, that's a massive, massive thing to get right. What were your kind of tips for getting, you know, scale correct and, and making those planets feel huge, you know? Well, ha having a really small element and especially if you could recognize that asset and know how big it is in real life, then that really helps scale. But I think one of the biggest changes that we did in that shot where the sh spaceship comes flying towards the planet. We had the planet in the corner before so that it wouldn't like collide. But someone asked, what would it look like if the planet was kind of behind covering most of the screen? And we moved the planet and it was like, oh my God, that's a completely <laughs> new shot. And it was just amazing. Because uh, if we look at the previous, it, that shot was maybe kind of lacking. Yeah, it was It was okay. And now it yeah. turns it turned in, into like my favorite shot for sure. Yeah, one of my favorite too. You know the shots where the ship is entering and going into land. Can you just tell us about building that kind of shot? Yeah, so this shot was one of the main inspirations actually for this sequence and quite kind of a important one to just showcase the, uh, the environment. Yeah, it's a lot of kit bashing stuff. Uh, so that's the main approach. But I wouldn't recommend doing it the way we did because I just put a lot of way too high res models in there. The scene turned out is way too heavy. It's tempting, isn't it, to just go, oh, I've got these amazing assets, let's just throw them together. But then when you yeah. get to those stages of like lighting, <laughs> rendering, what would you have done differently or what did you change when you realized that, ah, that's gonna take a long time to render? Yeah, we got a tip from the from our teacher that it's basically no parallax here, so we, we're good with one frame. So it's just one frame projected. We just did, or I just did uh, some matte painting in comp to, to add, add the light details and stuff. So yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't go as, as heavy on the, on the models. They do that in movies anyway, you know, unless they've got insane avatar budgets and they want to go all out. So on this project and your projects in general, what have been some of like the biggest things learned about the VFX pipeline? as a whole. The thing I'm most thankful for is knowing quite a bit about compositing because that's 
where you can just save it a lot. And even with quite bad CG, you can make things look super cool. And and so for the suit, suit project, for example, the first compassing, even with final CG, didn't look nearly as good as the final result. With more time in comp, it could have looked even better. So it's it's a skill that can, can do a lot, especially working with plates, but also with CG. We wouldn't be able to just put on some filters in After Effects. You mentioned earlier about your both both your skills and like your knowledge, like growing together. You know, was there anything that you were lacking, and then you've improved because of this project? Well, I would for sure say my artistic side. I have been okay. I've gotten a re- pretty okay result, but especially working with Sondra, who's really good at look dubbing and just seeing how he kind of works, where he gets his references from, and what he kind of looks at, really did help me grow as a, a as an artist. I remember that one time where where I kind of uploaded a version, and he was like, "Oh man, now you got it!" <laughs> nice. I was like, "Yes." <laughs> that was kind of uh, a big deal for me. It sounds like I'm very brilliant. I'm, uh... <laughs> no, you 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 are, man. Both of both of you, of course. Out of you guys, who's got the cleanest nuke files? I remember the first Alan Walker music video that I worked on with uh, with Sundra, and uh, then taking over one of the shots that he's previously done. I was like, oh my god, what is, it, what is this mess? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is terrible, and then. Throughout the years, Sondre, I think, w- recently took over a shot that I-, I did. And he was like, this came from you? Because I've gotten so much more messier and he's gotten so much more meat. So it's kind of, uh, it's gone the other way. Yeah. What I've kind of recognized is that it, it comes down, down to time this, this as well. So when you don't have time, it becomes messy, man. Of course, man. Going into this project, suit and the cryo your projects uh sebastian as well with the the cannons and things what problems did you kind of anticipate before starting these projects well i, I remember a lot <laughs> let's let's pick some of the ones that stand out for you sandra yeah for the for the suit project i was concerned for a couple of things really especially like the the match move of like the head and body and getting that thing to work it was maybe my biggest concern the way i solved it is basically just doing a lot of testing and uh, i remember reaching out to match movers on linkedin and uh, i actually got quite a lot of good tips other parts were like rigging of the suits because i i can't do any rigging at all yeah the rig is kind of bad but it does it does the trick do you look at your the final piece and go and you can notice things that are like ah that could have been better yeah it's worse uh, like right after wrapping the project i never like anything like right after wrapping it and then maybe after a couple of weeks it's just ah oh. <laughs> yeah it, this was actually quite cool. Yeah. What about you, Sebastian? Any any things that you were anticipating before a project? The project before that, w- where I did the cannon shot, the <laughs> there are a lot of things went wrong. I was wondering how I would do the smoke and such when when the when the cannon shot. I ended up doing it at Embergen, which I which I didn't think was going to work. I was positively surprised when when that actually ended up working out. But there were things like when the when the ships were going to shoot back, they didn't quite work out. I first tried doing those in CG as well as VDBs, but that was a complete waste of time since it was so far away. I could have just done them in comp. All right. Have you guys worked on set before? Have you done any actual kind of live action shoots with heavy VFX leading up to this point? Well, we did have a kind of two subjects prior to this, which was uh, heavily focused on uh, being on set, oh, okay. being an on set supervisor. Those were us going through the whole pipeline. My or our teacher called it a 10 step process where we kind of do all the pre-production and then we do the production and then um, we finally uh, end off uh, in comp. We also did get a, a really cool supervisor in and told us in this really intensive week all about his tricks and uh, what he does on set. Um, one of our artists asked, did you re-topologize and clean up the helmet and chair scans? I think I did so. I, I only used them for, for tracking, really. I'm not really using it for renders. It's just for, for reference, really. So the only reason to clean it up would be to not have a pain and a heavy view perk. We also use some of it in comp, so having having a lighter weight version, otherwise Nuke doesn't really like you. I actually scanned the set with normal scan using a, a DSLR, and I did it with the LiDAR on the iPhone, and also used the Luma AI. The Luma AI actually turned out to be the, the only scan working. Oh, really? Yeah, so that's quite uh, quite interesting, because it, it was able to like catch 
all the stands and everything, which is quite hard with this traditional photo scan. That's that's really interesting, actually, and that's one of the questions from our, one one of our artists is talking about Luma AI. Is there any like lighting conditions that you need to be aware of, like or materials like that don't work as good with generating a mesh? Yeah, that's where it's uh, differentiating a bit from Photoscan. I'm not an expert in this, but that's where the benefit of Luma AI comes in, I guess, uh, because it's able to understand and the reflections a bit better. So if you render it through Luma, you can actually see the reflections moving and stuff. It's is pretty cool, but I'm just converting it and using it for for checking out. Anyways, nice. What what kind of things should people be aware of or look out for when you know doing match moves from like scans? Well, you should uh, take measurements on set, knowing how big a certain thing that you have in your both your scan and your plate is optimal. Also, I remember being really stuck on that a photo scan has to be mathematically perfect, which I quickly realized that that wasn't necessarily the case. It could actually make mistakes. So I was for a few hours maybe trying to match something that just wouldn't match. What did you do to overcome that issue? Well, I knew I uh, I needed the scan for, for example, shadows only in the mid-ground. So I, I focused on uh, trying to match the match move. Had I needed it for the foreground and so on, I might have tried to manually adjust the photo scan. Yeah, I mean, all these technologies, there's always some things that kind of can cause issues. Is there any advice for students kind of creating their own work? We talked about how on our bachelors, we still had a high ambition, but we wanted to tone it down because we knew what we'd been through. But I would 100% recommend to fall front first uh, on your face, trying to do something that's not gonna work <laughs> just because then you see where the limit is I, both Sondre and I maybe especially I have failed a ton on uh, on different projects just trying to see what works what doesn't yeah I completely agree it's easy to spend too much time where it's not needed as well I'd say spend more time in comp really oftentimes the shots are just bad until they're not bad so there's just bad 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 and then good so you just kind of have to keep working on it uh, in some cases, but also just realizing when when an idea doesn't work as well. Was there any ideas in the in these projects that you scrapped early on because it's like that's not going to work? Was there anything like that that you can remember? Well, we did have a shot on the Bachelor that uh, where we had like this cargo ship, and we realized this is a completely new scene and. Uh, there's really no point in having this shot. I did a whole new rig for a new space or a different spaceship. Yeah, th that's one of the early times where Solar was like, yeah, this 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 won't work. How far do you go until you realize like we should just abandon this idea? I mean, as I previously said that uh, we like to get into comp as quickly as possible. So I I was already doing kind of like temp comps oh, okay. until I realized when, when I wanted to update the animations and so on that this was going to be a lot more work. Is there any plans to use any like real-time renderers such as Unreal Engine or Unity in your workflows? I've at least used 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 it a bit on on some projects where the deadline doesn't allow anything else. <laughs> but uh, I don't feel like it's there for for the kind of visual effects we've done just yet. But I I'm seeing some stuff that's looking really really good as well. Yeah, I've done some one shots that was just a tiny bit of. It had a tiny bit of defocus in the background. So I did a background in Unreal and I, and I feel like, okay, that works. But I'm struggling a bit with like the rendering. It's it's just so much different from the traditional uh, softwares. So it's a bit of a head twist to get into those things. Is that is that in terms of like render layers is or, or just rendering in general? Are you more comfortable with rendering the traditional layers for comp? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I ask that because I you, you say that you like to get into comp fairly quickly and I, I just thought with unreal engine if you've got something visually you know 70 percent 60 percent there in terms of in your viewport that you could then put into comp and test out things you know with your skills in the comp world i just wondered if that was something that works for particular shots for you guys you know i mean i, I had also tried unreal a bit and uh it produces like these amazing results uh I just never really got into it. I was already relatively comfortable with Maya and the traditional workflow. And usually we had relatively tight deadlines. So I knew that had I tried to get into Unreal, I probably would uh, not achieve the same result that I would uh, with Maya.
you know, people want to achieve the cinematic look. Is there any things that you like to do to your work to push it towards that cinematic feel? I guess one of them is especially study lenses, <laughs> like really study them. Go into shot deck, look at the lens that you are trying to go for and try to match it as well as you can. I would say that that's like the top, top thing. Having a decent understanding about lighting as well is also really, really important. Yeah, like doing photography and that kind of stuff is probably helpful. I'd say just also, if if you're learning, just try to nail the basics. Just try to do do cool CG integration, but do it with an easy shot, maybe. Just do a, a, do a car on asphalt, which which I did. <laughs> and uh, just spend a lot of time, time on that, even if it's not too complicated. No, great advice. Thanks, guys. Is there anything that you guys are up to at the moment? What are your plans now in terms of work? No, I have to say that I I did uh, get into the studio of my dreams. There's a, an amazing work environment, and uh, now I'm currently getting to do exactly what I wanted to do, which was a uh, comp and uh, pipeline. What studio was that? Sorry, Sebastian. Uh, Storm Studios. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome, man. How, how did you get that role? What advice would you give to people looking to get into their dream job? I guess we were really lucky because uh, at our school, we have uh, this thing called uh, uh, Industry Week where different studios come in and actually interview the students because uh, the school is really close with uh, the industry. So having that opportunity just to be able to be shown. I'm relatively introverted, so trying to get an interview by speaking to uh, the the comp lead or, or something like that, I really struggle with that, but having the school to kind of give us a free path was really, really helpful. Amazing. Did they just see your work, Sebastian, and just snap you up and like, we need this we need this kid in, in the team? Was that how, how it was for you? Yeah, both Sondra and I got a, got a job offer. Oh, and yourself, Sondra, as well. You work at the same studio. Yeah, no, I work at ILP, so uh, it's it's a bit of the same, but uh, just in Stockholm. What's what's that studio, Sandra? And what's that? Uh, important looking pirates. Yeah, congratulations! So you stepped straight into into work from from putting in all that hard work on those projects at university. Yeah, yeah, and that's what it com- comes down to in the end, just having that good show reel. Again, it's better to have some solid shots that that don't have too many elements than having like. A lot of explosions and the colors being everywhere. Awesome, man. Do they like talk to you as people as well, or do they just go off your show reel? Yeah, they, they did talk to us. Yeah, <laughs> they uh, they looked through our uh, show reel prior. So they kind of had an idea already. Uh, So I guess the interview was more to see how we are as people. (laughs) But for sure, uh, what Sondra mentioned about uh, a few solid shots rather than more. I mean, I guess the golden rule is to try to keep it under... uh, under a minute and uh, one thing our teacher always told us was to keep your like money shot completely in the start i was gonna say i I hear that all the time put your best thing first because these people are just looking through lots of applications and if if that first shot catches their eye then they're going to want to watch the rest of it is there anything guys that you want to mention about anything that we might have missed shout out to people anything who should we uh, shout out <laughs> <laughs> we could shout out our school christiania university college i was wondering what it was in english yeah the visual effects program there is is really good anybody else you want to shout out someone your mom yeah my mom yeah, yeah. good yeah. shout out that's great <laughs> Awesome, man. Yeah, but I completely agree. I completely agree. Oh, oh, and I did promise to shout out my mentor at Storm. Go for it. Yulia, woo. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I don't know if you should keep that in or not. <laughs> no, go go for it. Are you two going to team up again, work on something fresh together? We made the teaser, so uh, I guess we have to make the movie as well. You've got to make the movie. That's it. <laughs> the, the fans want it, guys. <laughs> we we want to see more. But no, whatever you guys up to, we'll, we're going to be watching with a close eye because your work stood out straight away. So we wish you all the best and we'll be following you closely. Oh, thanks. Thanks for your time. We really appreciate it. And that was a great insight to, to your work on those projects. So thank you, guys. Thank you for inviting. It's been fun. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> now we loved it. I'm see you guys. I really appreciate it. And we'll speak to you very soon, man. All the best. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks, Sebastian. Thank you. Peace out, gang. Bye.